Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here, and if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. So, tonight I wanted to kind of just do a little something different. Um, I've had several comments and discussions pop up on Twitter regarding the legitimacy of astrophotography images. You know, uh, people commenting on, hey, this looks great, this is pretty cool, but you know, is this fake? Is this real? And I know this is probably something that comes up a, a lot uh, in this hobby, but I can tell you firsthand personally that the images I take and the images that are taken by any self-respected astrophotographer are very much real. Uh, there are certain methods and techniques used to acquire the data so that it can be processed into a lovely image that you you know see posted online but what I'd like to do is just show you some examples of true color images then of course what is what does constitute a fake image and just to put it simply any astrophotography image that has something done to it to manipulate its integrity in order to deceive the viewer to me, that, that would constitute a fake image. So let's go to the computer and take a look at some examples here to give you kind of an illustration of what I'm talking about. Okay, so we'll start with my very humble uh, Instagram page here. And these, these are all images that I've taken, okay? And all of these are real. For instance, this right here, this is the Pleiades constellation. Uh, this is a total of about 2.7 hours of data. Uh, I think it was something like 53 minute or so pictures, subframes, we call them subframes, stacked and then processed in Photoshop to remove light pollution, um, bad signal, and to bring out the detail that is actually within each frame. So, I mean, these are just a few examples of my work here. This is one of my favorites. Uh, this here is the Ro Ophiuchi Cloud Complex. I took this down at St. George Island, and this is the settings. This is what I used. Um, it was 215 individual pictures taken at 45 seconds per picture at ISO 3200. Now, each individual subframe in of itself, you couldn't quite make out all this detail. It was there. You could see some of the red and yellow, and, I, and I'll show you guys some raw images too, just to, to give you an idea of what some of these raw images look like before they're processed. One of the most impressive ones though was this right here, believe it or not. This is, this is processed as in, and what I mean by process, stacked. I think it was, it was only 22 minute subframes that I stacked, uh, also taken at St. George Island, Florida, but the raw images themselves looked pretty amazing right out of the camera. So I'll show you guys some of those too, but these are some examples of some real images. Um, and I know this guy won't mind me sharing his pictures, Dylan O'Donnell, because uh, all his stuff's public domain. Thank you, Dylan. But and this is one of his newer ones, which is just just incredible. But all of these are real, guys. And what I mean by real is it is real data that was acquired using a specialized camera or digital SLR camera on a motorized mount uh, with a telescope of some sort, be it reflector, refractor, whatever, uh, in order to track the celestial movement of these objects and keep them sharp and in focus while imaging them. It's then, the, the real magic takes place in the processing. And there's, there's all kinds of processing software like PixInsight, 
Astro Pixel processor, which I use, and Photoshop. Photoshop in of itself is awesome. And yes, you can use Photoshop in ways that are deceptive and manipulate photos, but it is actually an excellent tool when processing and bringing out detail in images such as these. So just wanted to show you guys some examples. Um, let's see who else we got on here. Let's see if my buddy Ruse is, I know he's, there he is, Rosine Farsad. He has his own channel as well. If you haven't checked it out, check out Rosine's, Far, uh, Rosine's uh, site, YouTube channel, Astrofarsography. All of this work here is Rosine's, and this is all, these are all real as well. Uh, some of these are done in what's called narrow band. But in other words, uh, what you have here is like an O3, oxygen 3. That All that blue represents the oxygen data. And that red is, is usually hydrogen alpha or sulfur 2. And those are mapped to red in the spe visible spectrum. And the oxygen is mapped to blue. And that's how you get that composite color image. Some more great work, though. This guy does some awesome work, too. So these are this is some examples of real stuff. It, it, there's some fake stuff out there uh, where people may distort a real image and either just completely, you know, blow colors completely out of proportion or put some wacky rainbow color or distortion filters on it. And, and at that point, it's more of just artistic expression. If it's expressed as anything else other than that, it's really not. So there was some examples of my work, Dylan O'Donnell's, and Razine Farsad with Astrofarsography. Uh, all of those, and there's many more guys. There's there's a lot of uh, respectable astrophotographers out there. Uh, Chuck's Astrophotography, Ray's Astrophotography, Astro Stacy, Amy Astro, Astro Ed, Alan Mitchell, Alan Wallace. There's the list goes on. Astro Backyard, of course. So anyway, those are real. Um, and now I want to show you guys some raw images, what these images, a lot of these images or what these images look like coming right out of the camera. And I'm going to be honest with you and up front, a lot of them, they don't look that impressive. And in fact, some of them, you, you can barely see, you can see the object in it, but you, <laughs> and some of you can barely see it. I mean, it's there, but there's so much sky glow or light pollution, humidity, like I said, the atmospheric turbulence, um, things that are bad signal hitting your sensor, not to mention the read noise, the color noise um, from the sensor itself and your camera that you have to, ba that you're, you're battling and, and trying to peel away, essentially, you try to peel away all of that bad data to get to the good data that your camera did capture. So here you go, let's take a look at some raw images. Okay, so let's take a look at some raw images. I'm sure a lot of you are curious, um, you know, what does a raw image straight out of the camera look like? So let's just start from the, start from the top here with the Andromeda Galaxy. We'll go to raw, and this will have to open up in Photoshop to view it. And there you go, that is a raw image completely unedited and untouched straight out of the camera now you can see the a lot of the data is there there's you know some nebulosity and, and interstellar dust here um, and you can even see the faint wispy detail of the galaxy extending all the way around here but without image processing tools like PixInsight, Astro Pixel Processor, and Photoshop, this would be about as good as you're going to get. But with the use of processing software, you can stack these images, and you see all this, these little, you see all these little dots, that's all luminance noise. The color noise actually isn't too bad, but there's some color noise in there too. That takes away from the good signal that's hiding even more detail. So you stack that all together and you get the final image that I showed you earlier. Let's take a look at another one. There you go. Raw image, straight out of the camera. I mean, it's even got like a greenish hue. And this is from light pollution, guys. You know, I, I image from my backyard 
and Bortle four and a half, four, pushing now Bortle five skies, and this was without a filter. So you got a little bit of a color cast coming from the light pollution, the street lights. So again, and look at the noise, just look how noisy it is. When you're running these long exposures, the, there's so much grain in them. Uh, that's why it's so important to stack these images because it reduces that grain and it improves the overall signal so you can get a better image. Let's see, one that would be surprisingly, let's see, the flame, raw. I mean, let's check that out. That's, that is straight out of the camera. Look how much H-alpha data is coming through in that image. Now, there's still some, just like in the others, there's gradients from street lights, from the heat from the camera, from dead pixels, hot pixels, read noise, color noise, you name it just muddying up this picture but even so I mean just look at this look at look at this nebula detail you're able the nebulosity uh, that you're able to attain just from a raw image let's see one oh let's take a look at the Milky Way if you go to us now the area of the sky I was imaging was easily a Bortle 2 maybe even Bortle 1 there it was over the ocean and there's it's a Bortle 3 or better on the island as it is, but the area of the sky I was aiming at, it was just incredible. Look at that. That's straight out of the camera. Unedited. Raw image. This is what did, and this is a modern digital SLR, guys. This isn't even an astronomy camera. This is a, it is modded uh, in that it has the infrared UV cut filter removed so that it's more sensitive to uh, the H alpha spectrum of light which is right here you can see the lagoon nebula right there it picked that up the red in there and if you go over here check this out there's Rho Ophiuchi cloud complex there's the yellow some of the red there again the noise and everything muddies up the details but there you go. These are raw images straight out of the camera. This is what they look like. Let's look at the Rho of UG complex. There, look at this. This one especially. The the lights just washed out so much of the data. It's hard to even see where the blue is. There, believe it or not, there's blue in here. <laughs> you can see some of that yellow, some of that red. There's that awesome star cluster, and that's part of that complex. But there's actually blue in here, but it's muddied up from sky glow and light pollution. Let's do one more. Let me show you guys one more. Let's do what was an impressive change. I mean all of them really it really is impressive to see the difference between a single image. Yeah, let's look at M45 Pleiades. Look at that. Now this one, the blue is is very strong, so even though the light pollution is drowning out a, a lot of the detail in this image you can still see the blue but then this is so this is a raw shot this was taken in my backyard and when you stack 49 of those and remove the light pollution you get this so <laughs> there's the difference and um, yeah I, I hope this helps dispel any myths about astrophotography being fake um, in as I've shown you here, these are all legitimate images that are processed using uh, techniques that allow you to maximize the signal, the good signal, and reduce or minimize the bad signal so that you can get an awesome final image such as this. Well guys, there you go. That's a little insight into some of the raw images I have taken in the past and of course the you've seen the, the final results um, that I've posted previously. And if you haven't, you should check out my Twitter, uh, my Instagram, and Astrobin sites, which are all listed in my profile on YouTube if you want to see more of my work. But uh, hopefully this video just kind of helps. Uh, if you got questions or doubts of whether or not a lot of this astrophotography stuff that you see online is real or not, the majority of it is real. If they're acquiring the data like I've mentioned or in a similar fashion and processing it in a way that maintains the integrity of the image and just helps reduce the stuff that gets away of the good signal and is not making any effort to deceive people with manipulation 
of the the good data to, to being something else then yeah what you're looking at is is a real image of the cosmos so hope you guys found the video enjoyable if you felt like you got something out of it was helpful useful to you or at least semi-entertaining please give me a thumbs up um, also, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use, I've got some links down in the description below to some stuff that will help get you started on the right foot. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. God bless. Keep looking up. Keep on seeking. And until next time, clear skies.